Well, good morning, good morning, rise and shine. <laughs> Whew, my goodness, what a week, what a week, what a week. My Lord, have mercy. It's a wonderful day today. It's Friday, Friday, T-G-I-F. Can you believe it? Like how fast it seems like time is flying by. Sharon Johnson, you are the first one on my call along with Chris Paulette. God bless you, Chris. Lisa, welcome. Praise God. Sharon Johnson, yes, TGIF, that's right. Bradley Jenkins, blessings to you, my sister. Jazz Hoyle, good morning. Nanine is on the scene. Louis Alvarez, man, so glad you're on, bro. Missed you, man. Um, praise the Lord. I know you've been working hard, man. Uh, holy hallelujah. Yes, Justin Rogich, Dorothy Meredith, Ray Clayton. Mm, okay, Dorothy, good to have you on board as well. Really good. Now, Tarbanio, Tarbania, amen. Michelle Williams, good morning, family. Good morning, fam. It is great to be with the TGIF fam. <laughs> Peggy, hallelujah. God bless you as well. Um, Yes, welcome. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Yes, Peggy, Morning Star. Yes, good to have you. Love that last name. Michael Cook, blessings, my brother. Willie Hernandez, God bless you, Willie. Good to have you with us as well. Unique Bullock is with us as well. Unique, God bless you. Donna Lee, Jackie Martinez. Yes, good morning, good morning. Tammy Massey. Matt Michael Cook, <laughs> hallelujah. Dorothy Meredith, oh yes, yes, yes. God bless you, Dorothy, good morning. Oh, uh, yes, good morning, Holy Spirit, yes. We wanna hear from you, Hilda Bryant. Thank you so much. Had a wonderful time last night. That food was awesome. Norman, I heart, <laughs> Norman and Marie, glad you made it as well. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Sulema Winkler, my goodness, good to see you, my dear sister. I guess you're probably still in Florida, enjoying the sunshine and the sunshine state and just having a good time. So good to have you, Diana Almazo. Diana, it was so good to have you here during the conference. Hope you get back again soon. Phyllis Moon, all right, Phyllis Moon has made it. Michelle Williams, yak. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Zaida Preston, Zaida Preston. Blessings, bendiciones, mi hermana. Renee Rice, man, I miss seeing you, man. I hope you get a chance to make it to church one day. Yes, Florida, I know you are. Enjoying life down there. Amber Davis, God bless you. Feliz Viernes, igualmente. Irene Welch, good morning, Irene and Audrey Ross. Bobby Rogers, man, that's awesome, Bobby. I'm so glad you're on board. Uh, yes, yes, hallelujah. Judy Frost, yes, God, God bless you, Judy. Good to have you as well. Audrey Ross and Judy Frost, back to back. <laughs> All right, man, we're cranking up. Frank Britt, God bless you. God bless you, TGIF, y'all. Thank God I'm free. Thank God I'm free. <laughs> Kim Cooper, drop it in the chat. Thank God I'm free. Kim Cooper, super Cooper, has made her way to stay. <laughs> oh, God bless you. Blessings to all of you. You guys are awesome. So good to have you on board. So uh, uh, I'm getting ready to get started here. Just one more minute, and uh, we'll go forward. Yes, I think you may. Uh, uh, thank you. Oh, thank you for what you do. All right, well, that's interesting. I couldn't read the whole thing. Uh, but anyway, I hope that, um, that everybody is well today and we'll try to make things clear as we go forward. Yvonne Harrison, God bless you. Uh, praise God. And, and listen, if you guys have any questions, now I, I wanna bring this up uh, before we get started. If you have any questions like about scripture, about Bible, you know, make sure you put them in the chat. I may not be able to address them during the chat. Leon Wiley, God bless you. Um, uh, if you have any questions about certain things, uh, so I think I saw something that something, somebody might have been confused about some, something. Uh, Jeremy Lee Rice, God bless you. Um, if, if that's the case, please make sure you put the questions in the chat because Lisa can 
uh, uh, record them, right? She's our, our online coordinator. And, and that way I, we can get back with you either on Facebook, on a DM, or maybe answer any questions that you may have, biblical questions, whatever. We want to be a blessing to you. And, uh, and sometimes we need to things, have things clarified. Amen. Joe Wilson, God bless you. Glad you made it, brother. Better late than never. Come on, somebody. Uh, so I just want to make that, just make that clear, Diane Wooten and the rest of y'all that are coming on. If you have a question, Mr. Lederick Underwood, anyone that's here, if you have a question, write it down in the chat and we'll circle back around and get back with you and answer any questions that you may have, particularly any questions about the Bible, about the church, just anything at all. Just I'll make sure you drop it in there, all right? Amen. Praise God. Well, we're going to go and get started. So glad you guys are on board. And, uh, oh, Dennis Lopez just lit in here. Come on, somebody. The fam's all here. Amen. Justin, praise God. So listen, I want to I want to uh, start our Bible study this morning. And I've entitled our time together, Miss Peggy Stevens. I've entitled it, Say What God Wants to Hear. Come on, somebody. Say, drop that in the chat. Say what God wants to hear. Uh, the, uh, well, I'm going to explain that in a moment because people are saying, what? Say what God wants to hear. Yeah, I'm going to explain that in a moment. But let's pray so that God's word will be able to be manifested in our lives. Miss Yvette Sanders. <laughs> Romans chapter 10, verse 10. That's what we're going to be reading from. Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now for your word. We thank you that it always enlightens us. It always inspires us. It always strengthens us. So this morning, we thank you to make the word clear in our hearts and our minds. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Say what God wants. Do what Romans chapter 10, verse 10 says. It says, for with the heart, one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. You see, when, when you came to Christ, you had a, an enlightened, enlightened moment where God, God became real and Jesus became real. And, be, and when you spoke it, you prophetically spoke the words out of your mouth of forgiveness and you accepted Jesus Christ. When you did that, you spoke things into effect, right? And God's word manifested. And of course, salvation took place the moment your mouth confessed. Come on. Your, your, your faith in God and your belief that Jesus died on the cross for you. You see, your words affect God. As a matter of fact, drop, drop this in the chat. Your words affect God. Your prayers ignite God. Your faith moves God. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm going to say that one more time for, for y'all that are typing right now. Your words affect God. Your prayers ignite God, and your faith moves God. See, God is eager to help to uh, to help you, and God is eager to equip every one of us to use our words to bring encouragement and strength to life. See, the word the Lord is always paying attention to what we say. God is not just listening to your words; He hears your heart. Look what, uh, look, look what this word this word says here. I, I love this. And Jesus was so upset and, he, and he, told, he told this. This is a powerful word that he told the, 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 the Pharisees. He called them a brood of vipers. How can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Mm. See, drop this in the chat right now. Your mouth reveals what's in your heart. Your mouth reveals what's in your heart. See, we need to realize that everything we say has an impact. Whatever comes out of our mouth makes a difference. See, we, may, we must be careful with what we say because our words do carry weight. They do make an impact. They actually do make a difference. See, we have to be especially careful when we're weary and physically tired. Come on, somebody. It's so easy to get agitated and say things that we have to apologize for later. Oh, come on now. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You get tired. You get upset. Somebody says the wrong things, and man, it lights your fuse up and sets you off. And then we begin to say things, and, and they're, not, they're not good things. They're not edifying things. And then people around us are affected. And, of course, later on... Um, 
um, we have to come back and apologize. We've all been there. Come on, man. Every single one of us. <clears throat> Look what Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29 has to say. It says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for and what's good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Oh man, let no corrupt some some versions say no no not just incor no corrupt words, but unwholesome words come out of your mouth because it you, whatever you say should impart grace. It should be a blessing to those that listen. So sometimes we have to be careful <clears throat> to hold back uh, our thoughts because it's one thing to think something. <laughs> it's just another thing to say it. And the moment you say it, then it becomes, it begins to manifest either something, either the Bible says either manifest life or it manifests death. See, we must recognize that what we say affects the people that are listening. We need to know that our words do make a difference. You can usually be with someone for a short time. How many know what I'm talking about? And you can, and before you can begin to detect the issues or their sincerity, like whether they're real or fronted, just by what they're talking about. People are, um, maybe sometimes they exaggerate or sometimes they just, when you're sitting there listening to them, uh, if every word is I, 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 then you, you find out that they're just all about themselves or if they talk about crazy stuff or, if just, or just maybe if they're gossiping and complaining all the time, it reveals what this person's, what's in their heart, but it also reveals what's happening in their lives. And that's, that's something that we need to be very cautious with because we have to allow the, the right people into our lives, right? That's why before, that's why you ever notice that before uh, you, you, have, you get a job, uh, you have an interview. See, and and if you if you're an employer, you know you want to make sure that you have an extensive interview to see how people respond to your questions during your conversations. Absolutely. See, that's what interviews are for. They they're, they're trying to see where you are, but the only way they can judge that, right? They can look at you and evaluate you is the how you speak, how you express yourself. What come, when they ask you a question? How do you respond, right? See, I remember one of the worst interviews I have ever had. I got to tell you, this was bad. See, I had an interview. I had, I had been unemployed for about three months. This is right before I got saved. And uh, so so I was just going through an emotional trauma, man. It was so hard, right? And uh, so I lost my job. And I, so I waited for, I, I was looking, but I was going through such a depression and, uh, but I finally, the, the Lord touched my heart. I began to interview and I decided it was time to go ahead and get up and be, be more aggressive. So I just picked up the phone book, started calling every computer company in the phone book until finally somebody said, hey, I have a friend. It was probably like my 15th phone call. I have a friend in Norfolk that needs somebody for Richmond. Long story short, I went for the interview and oh my goodness, I was so desperate, right? I, I mean, I needed a job. I was paying my bills with my credit card, building up debt, so I needed something quick. And of course, when I began to talk, you can sense you could sense the the uh, <clears throat> desperation, right, in my voice and, and what I was trying to get across because I really wanted this job. I felt really qualified for it, and literally, I began to I was just really overconfident, arrogant, kind of oversold myself, kind of telling the guy that hey, listen, if you hire me, um, if you if you don't hire me, you're gonna pass up probably the person that could do this job the best. I said all kind of crazy stuff i was just i needed a job anyway long story short it was horrible and you know uh there's a there's a proverbs uh chapter 8 verse 13 that says all who fear the lord will hate evil therefore i hate pride and arrogance corruption and perverse speech mm. That was me, yo. I was prideful. I was arrogant. And I was just trying to sell myself so hard. And finally, check this out. This is so crazy. The interviewer replied, just like Peter, he took his eyes off the Lord. When he took his eyes off the Lord, he sank. This is during an interview. <laughs> and I went, oh my goodness. The, he was a believer. And in spite of my terrible interview, he hired me anyway. Oh my goodness. That was just a God move, and God just showed me that uh, that that you know that He's in control. But that was God's grace that I was able to get that job when I needed it because it was literally the worst interview 
I've ever done. See, I, I believe this too, uh, not just what we say reveals who we are, but what you speak determines where your mind goes. Drop that in the chat right now. Where you speak, what, what you speak determines where your mind goes. See, when you speak, your mind stops to listen and then obeys what you say. Mm, listen to me carefully. That's why we have to be careful what we say because our mind begins to always align itself with our words. So if you walk around saying, man, I'm just so tired. I'm just, oh, what a day. Your mind goes, ooh, you're so tired. Let me make sure you feel tired. Let me make sure that you that you are tired. Let me make sure. But if you, you know, sometimes we have to speak by faith, right? And go, man, I don't know about you. Sometimes I wake up in the morning and go, oh, it's going to be a fantastic day. It's a good day. The moment you start speaking positive things, your mind, come on, somebody, responds. And then all of a sudden, your attitude changes. Oh, it, absolutely. See, uh, it's so important to understand. That's why That's why when you're internal conversation, listen, we have a conversation with ourselves all day long. It begins to bring you down. Listen, sometimes when you when you when you begin to speak negative things, it brings your your internal conversation, what's happening inside your mind, what you're thinking, and what you're talking to yourself about. Uh, it begins to bring you down because you're thinking negative thoughts. Listen, speak out in faith. And it shifts everything. All of a sudden, your mind just say the opposite of what you feel. Listen, I re I remember uh, one of the I was doing a, an exercise program, and man, burpees are just so hard. It, it says where you stand up, you drop down, do a push up, get back up, and then do that. Keep doing that over and over again. Man, that's the one of the hard. And I remember I was every time that. That, that particular uh, exercise came up, I would go, oh my God, here we go. I hate these things. And it would be so hard to do them and I would just struggle. And then I, I remember uh, writing this here, <laughs> writing this, what I'm sharing with you right now. And I said, wait a minute, I gotta practice what I preach. So I be, every time I got to the to that to that particular part, Miss Elizabeth Albano, I began to all of a sudden go, oh my God, I keep saying all this negative stuff. So instead, I begin to say, oh, there, here comes burpees. Yes, I love burpees. And all of a sudden, you would not believe what happened within a day or so, every time that exercise came up, and I went, oh, I love, I kept, I kept saying, I love burpees. And man, next thing you know, I am attacking them, man. I'm, and I'm having fun with it. It changed my whole attitude because what I said made a difference. And you see, it's so important to understand that because so many of us have also had toxic things spoken over us that really hurt us. That's right. We're not just the ones uh, transmitting the words. We've received some words from people that was very damaging to us. Words like, you'll never amount to anything. You don't have what it takes. Come on, you come from the wrong side of the tracks. Listen, we've had all kind of stuff spoken over us. That's why you need to speak God's word over yourself. We need to speak God's word over ourselves. Look at Psalms 139, 14. I tell you what, some of y'all, some of us need to write this down and put it somewhere and declare it every single morning. In Psalms 139, verse 14, it says, I will praise you. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. Oh my goodness. Speak that over yourself every day. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Come on, God created you the best that you could ever be. Listen, Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. Because he wanted them to know how to speak and how to pray and how to communicate to God in the way God wants you to. Amen. See, just like we speak things that make an impact, when we pray, those words begin to move the heart of God as well. Jesus knew God's protocol and he gave us a blueprint of what God wants to hear. 
and you know that's where uh, uh, Matthew chapter 6, 9, 13, what we talked about not maybe not too long ago, maybe a couple weeks ago, we talked about the Lord's Prayer and how the Lord's Prayer really is a blueprint that shows the protocol of how God wants us to pray, to praise and, and pray for provision and for protection and for pardon. Listen, I'll tell you what, God, God, your words can move God's heart when you use your words correctly. And that's why Jesus taught them how to pray. Remember, faith talk is what God responds to favorably. Drop this in the chat right now. Faith talk is what God responds to favorably. So when you speak out in faith, come on, somebody, when you start declaring good things over yourself and over other people, you'll start seeing that God responds to the faith that your words transmit. Come on, somebody. Listen, it's okay. Confess your sins. Express your desire for forgiveness. See, state the things that you need God to do in your life. Declare God's provision and thank God for providing for every single need. Listen, he woke you up this morning. He woke all of us up this morning with a moment to spend time in his presence with his family right here on Walking in the Spirit. Listen, this is all God's grace and mercy for every single one of us, amen? And most of all, listen, proclaim his promises. When you proclaim God's promises, that he has given us, man, that's what God wants to hear because he knows that when we proclaim and declare his promises, that it creates faith inside of us and know that we're standing, listen to me, we're standing on what God said. And when you do that, it honors him. <laughs> he is pleased. So make sure you continue to proclaim his promises over every situation. That's what God wants wants to hear. Oh, come on, somebody. Listen, if you are blessed today by our Bible study, make sure you hit the share button when we're done. Amen. Praise God. Let's pray. Let's go to the Lord right now and pray over all the things that we just talked about. Plus, the, of course, the folks that are on our prayer list, right? Make sure we pray for them as well. Praise God. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We praise you this morning. You're such a good God, such an awesome and mighty God. And Father, today in Jesus' name, we just glorify you. We worship you. You are the creator of this universe. You're the creator of all that we are. Uh, Lord, you're the creator and the giver of every good thing. And we just thank you and worship you for who you are this morning. And Father, we praise you, Lord God, for all that you've done for us. We thank you and we praise you, Lord God, for your grace upon our lives that is sufficient to get us through anything that we go through. We thank you for your mercy because we deserve judgment, but your mercy forgave us, strengthened us. We were born again into your family and now we can be called children of the living God. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord God, that you are mighty and awesome. We pray, oh God, that you would help us to keep you at the forefront of our lives this morning, oh God. Oh, that your will be done in every single one of us, oh God. And we, and we thank you for your daily provision that every day, Lord God, you provide for us, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that there's nothing lacking, that there's nothing missing in our lives and even the lives of those that we're praying for right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, forgive us of any trespasses. Forgive us, oh God, of any sin that may be in our hearts, in our lives. Right now, in Jesus' name, we thank you for forgiving us, Lord God. And Father, help us to forgive others as well, Lord God, that we can have the power to forgive those that have hurt us those that have spoken negative things over us, we just forgive them right now for their trespasses on us, oh God, because we because we know we need to forgive them because you've forgiven us. Hallelujah, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for your protection. Protect us from evil. Protect us from everything. I plead the blood of Jesus over every family, over every household represented here today, Lord God, that no evil would enter into our homes, Lord God, but that our homes will be a sanctuary of peace and joy and love for ourselves and our families, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, because you are the mighty and awesome God. We thank you, Father God, for, for loving us and caring for us this morning. And Father, I pray for those right now that need to be saved. 
for those that are on our praying list that need to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, Lord, that they, they need to know you, Lord God. So, Father, draw them by your presence. Bring them to that place of salvation, even now, in Jesus' name. And, Father, though, Father God, I pray for those that need a divine healing right now. Father, let your healing power be loosed right now in Jesus' name upon all those that have a sickness or uh, some kind of virus, Lord God, or a germ that's causing havoc in their bodies. In Jesus' name, touch them right now. Let them be healed. We rebuke all that sickness, the spirit of infirmity. We command it to leave the, our bodies right now. You do not belong there. We command you to leave now in Jesus' name. And I speak divine health right now, Lord God. Strengthen those bodies. Strengthen those hearts and minds. Heal not just physically, but heal emotions right now. Heal the brokenhearted, Lord God. Heal those whose minds, Lord God, have been tormented right now in Jesus' name. Bring healing into their mental state as well, oh God, that they can be at peace right now. We speak to every storm right now in Jesus' name, and we say, peace, be still. So Father, I thank you, Lord God, for healing in every way, shape, and form of every part of our lives, oh God, in Jesus' name. And Father, we bring down any stronghold. We pray against every stronghold, every habit, every addiction in Jesus' name. We command those chains to be broken over people's lives, uh, chains of iniquity, chains of pride and gossip and, and slander and just words that come out of people's mouths, Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. We pray you'll touch them right now in Jesus' name and provide for every need that they may have, that every stronghold will be broken, that they'll walk, Lord God, in your ways, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Father. And Lord, I pray even now, Lord God, for your provision upon everyone's life. Lord, provide for their needs now, especially in this time of celebration that where many won't celebrate because it brings so many difficult challenges in their lives from the past, Lord God. And I pray that you will release them right now from the past, that they can step into the fullness of the celebration of Jesus Christ as we celebrate his birthday. What an ultimate birthday 2,000 years ago that changed everything, oh God, and, and it changed us. <laughs> and Father, I thank you and praise you for touching hearts and healing hearts right now and, and making a way and providing for everyone, Lord God, especially during this time. Father, I pray in Jesus' name for reconciliation of, of relationships. Gosh, you put so much weight on, the, on how we treat others, Lord God. You say in your word, how can we love you and hate our brother? Lord God, in Jesus' name, let that let that not be so in any one of our hearts, O oh God, that we can love others the way you love us, O oh God. And let there be reconciliation, humility, Lord God, to preserve relationships this day that are key in our lives, Father, in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you right now for this time together. I thank you, Lord God, for another week. Father, God, this week has gone by so fast, but we've seen your hand in it so many times and in so many ways. And we thank you for your faithfulness, Lord God, and you're true to your word. And we thank you, Father God, for your everlasting love. And Father, we just thank you for the victory. That's right. Begin to declare the victory right now. Thank you for answering our prayers, oh God. Let faith arise within us. Believe and trust you. Let faith arise. Let the enemy be scattered right now as we walk in your victory. And we thank you. And we're always going to make sure, my God, that you get all the glory, that you get all the honor and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh my goodness. Hallelujah. Man, what a great time. It has been amazing this week. So glad. So many of you guys have been so faithful and just wonderful. And I thank you guys so much. An amazing week. Listen, this wouldn't be the same without you. That's right. We, all of us together is what makes the power, what gives the power of prayer to be unleashed 
and, and our faith together, come on somebody, to move mountains, amen. Well, you know, I close every single gathering with the word of God. And, and today's uh, scripture is Psalms 19, 14. Psalms 19, 14 says this, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Mm, come on, somebody. That just seals the deal as we talked about what we say, what we speak. Hear what God, or say what God wants to hear, which are words of faith. Amen. Well, praise God. Well, listen, so glad, so very glad we're here. Thanks, thanks again for being part of this Walking in the Spirit gathering. Just amazing, amazing, amazing. Let me pray God's blessing over you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless my brothers and sisters, Lord God. Give them the desires of their heart as they delight themselves in you. Father, bless them, keep them, Lord God. Shine your face upon them, be gracious to them. Lift up your countenance towards them and give them peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, God bless you. Thanks again for joining me for another amazing week. And uh, enjoy your weekend. Be blessed. And Lord willing, you know, come to church. Listen, oh yeah, yeah. be at church. Pastor Rosa's got a word for us. I'll tell you what, I've been, uh, she was reading some of the sermon notes and I've been going, wow, this is going to be great. So make sure that you show up at church at New Life. If you're here in Richmond, of course, if you're elsewhere, make sure you go to the house of God and be blessed by God's word, but also be a blessing to others as they are encouraged by your presence. Amen. Praise God. Well, listen, God bless you. Remember, when you're walking in the spirit, you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy your weekend. And Lord willing, I'll see you right here. Come on, somebody. See you right